Temperature high. Hello and welcome to Vulcan. And we're here at the hottest part of the day to demo our new Sterling engine in its renewable form. So what we're doing is taking the well, taking advantage of the fact that Vulcan has such a huge temperature swing to generate power. Let's go up here and see what's going on. So we've got these three big insulated hot tanks over here and three big insulated cold tanks. At the hottest part of the day, these things all turn on and pump in hot air into these tanks and we can see we've got about just under 4 megapascals pressure, maybe about 50, 50 kilomoles of hot gas there at 600 degrees celsius and then these ones are quite full, there's a bit more cold air to go around a Vulcan it turns out and these, is, these, these ones are these ones turn on at night and fill up these cold tanks here. Got a couple of little IC scripts running those. Uh, but we just quickly get up the laptop here and have a look. Nothing too complicated going on here, but uh, basically we're, we've got a couple of defines here. This is the maximum pressure we want on the tank. This is the uh, nighttime temperature in Kelvin below which we want to fill the tanks. And this is the daytime temperature in Kelvin above which we want to fill the tanks. And this one looks to be for, um, looks to be for filling the hot tank. So, so long as the um, as long as the tank tank pressure is less than the um, the max pressure, and so long as the exterior temperature is greater than the daytime pressure, then should fill is uh, set to true, and we run this fill command here, which turns on all the active vents. Um, otherwise, we run the stop fill command, which turns off the active vents. Right, so let's go and have a look down here. So we've got a uh, IC chip running each one of those sides. We can use those batch commands, which are quite handy for that sort of stuff. Inside, it's pretty windy because what we're doing is blasting that um, cold air and running it across the Stirling engines because they generate so much heat that there's really no way to keep it cool um, using any other means. And we don't want to have to use air conditioners because that's going to cost us too much power. So when the uh, when the temperature and when the pressure in here falls below 200, measured at this point here, oh, and it appears our sterlings have turned off. So we might just wait here for them to come back on. Basically, if the uh, if the temperature in this room gets too hot, the uh, whole system shuts down until it can cool down again. I might need to increase the airflow maybe so it can run all, all the time. In the meantime, why don't we sort of check out how we're um, how we're ventilating it. So if we go outside, we can see we're pumping the uh, cold air in through those vents. And then we've got a um, we've got a turbo pump that's pulling the uh, pulling the air out the other side during the day. At night what we can do is just open up this little door over here. Got an airlock door here, that opens up. And it's nice and breezy in here because all the air is getting blasted out through that uh, through that floor tile. Um, so we just have to shut that during the day so we're not bringing hot air back into the base. But I suspect Things have probably started up again in here now, it's cooled down. Yeah, it's certainly not the kind of environment here you'd want to be opening your helmet in, but it's fine for the ceilings. Oh, look at them go. 
So we've managed to achieve almost 200 degree difference between the hot side and the cold side. And we've got them, uh, we've got them all in parallel here. So the hot network over here is coming in. We're keeping that at, at a higher pressure than the tanks and we've got a, uh, got a volume pump feeding that. And that'll turn off if the pressure here gets too high. And then this uh, output network is just going straight to a passive vent and venting straight outside. We don't want it. We don't need it to stick around. We're measuring the uh, air pressure in here, and if it gets uh, if it gets below 200, turn on that volume pump and pump up cold air in through here, and then do the pressure differential. The air's just flowing out that vent during the night, or during the day it's getting pumped out via the system here. How much power are we generating? Let's have a look. Almost 18 kilowatts, which is not too bad, seeing as we're getting it for free. Of course the system isn't free to run, so if we have a look over here... Um, we're going to need our tablet. Died, have you? Take it out. Blow on it. Pull it back in. <laughs> what have we got? Right, we're using two kilowatts at the moment, although I suspect we might use a bit more once we uh, are we running our active vents at the moment. We might be running a few of them because it's night time. Yeah, so we can. Uh, what else do I need to show you? I'm keeping an eye on the. Uh, on the pressures here, don't want anything to explode. Um, the other thing I'm doing is checking the pressures of all the sterlings, and if that internal uh, pressure gets over a threshold then I just shut everything down. So we can have a look at the script that runs it now, um, but I might do that outside because it's just a bit windy in here. So the first thing we're doing is setting all our um, all our defines, so all our um, kind of things that variables that we need to track to make sure that uh, things don't exceed or um, whatever. Uh, so that's the uh, the max pressure that a sterling is allowed to be at, and that's the safe pressure. So if it gets above that, it'll shut down and it'll turn back on once the safe pressure drops down. Um, so if, if the if I'm not taking the heat away from the stirrings fast enough, that's gonna that's gonna build up too high. We're not actually using that one anymore, I don't think. Um, if the uh, temperature goes above the max room temperature, it shuts all the um, shuts all the stirrings down and keeps the cooling down the room till it reaches the target, and then they'll start up again. Likewise, if the well, this is actually at 200 now. If the um, if the room falls below the target, it turns on the um, the room input. And this is the target for the hot input pressure. So that volume pump will turn on, pumping hot air into the input uh, until it reaches 6,000 kilopascals. And we stored our um, hash for the Stirling engine there as well. And this is kind of the main loop here. We're just evaluating all the different um, the different variables and setting these bar. I mean, I'm just, I'm just using them as booleans really. We have a function here for starting and stopping the stirlings. So 
so it's turning on the um, hot input pump if the hot input pressure gets below the target pressure this is turning on the um, input volume pump if the room temperature falls room pressure falls below the um, target pressure and this turns on the um, purging if the uh, room temperature is above the target but this ends up just basically running the entire time and that's the uh, that's the gist of it go back inside and see those sterlings Yeah, overall I'm pretty happy with the setup. It is very breezy in here. Um, I think the only thing I might try in the future is there sort of needs some way of getting more throughput of cold air because these things just create so much heat. Or may maybe I actually need the room to be longer and just not have them to a breast like that. Um, but it's um. Generating a decent amount of power. Um, it's a bit of work to set up, but uh, it was quite satisfying to put together. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it useful and entertaining, and I'll see you later.